In the world of interior design, I've been known for using a lot of color, but the truth is, the one color I've used more than anything out there is pure white. And in this chapter, we're gonna go over all the different ways to explore using white. What white is, how to use it successfully, how to overcome some of its challenges, and more specifically, how to use white in your own space. So let's get started. Let's start by explaining exactly what white is. White is actually technically not a color. It is counterintuitive to what most people might think. White is actually all of the colors together as one, not black. Black is actually the absence of color. And white also technically has no hue. In the interior design world, there are hundreds, and I mean hundreds of colors that are technically referred to as white. But the reality is there are way less than that that truly fall into a pure white category. The reason that most whites are not technically true whites is because of undertones. Almost every color that is called a white has some form of undertone, and that comes in all different colors. An undertone is best described as kind of like a bass that is an underlying tone that's brought out in the color when that color is introduced to it, like with different things that surround it. Whether it's furniture or nature or art or rugs, undertones can be pulled out from a white depending on how they're introduced around the white. When you're designing with white, it's very important to make sure that you're choosing a pure, true, ultra white. And now let's explore how to find that next. It can be remarkably overwhelming to find that right shade of white. Uh, one of the main reasons has to do with the fact that there are literally over 900 shades of white out there in the paint universe. So my biggest thing is to find one that does not take on any color cast from other colors that might be around the room that's gonna be painted white. Color cast, a word I am very, very familiar with from so many years dealing with pure white. Color cast is when anything that is inside or around an all white space reflects its own colors onto that pure white surface. And then bam, out of nowhere, what was white is slightly green or slightly red or slightly beige. And I went with a pure ultra white paint color in here. And you see how we have this green fern right next to it and a bunch of greenery on the trees outside. I chose an absolutely pure, perfect white, which is not influenced by all this green. That's why it is still white and not green. If I would have gone with a white that had green undertones, you'd be looking at this wall and it would look slightly green. Like probably the lightest shade of green you could find out there in the paint world. What would become really problematic in that situation in here if everything was a white that had green undertones? Then like the white of my shag rug would be slightly green. The white of my marble countertop would be slightly green and so on and so forth. So this is how I choose the right white for my space. This all comes down to the hue of the actual white you're working with and any possible color cast in or around the room. I get several different shades of white paint colors, all with slightly different hues to them. And then I paint them on canvases and I hold them up into the rooms at different times of the day. Based on where the sun sits, the intensity of the color will change. So sometimes early morning light might be way different in appearance than it would be right in the middle of the day when the sun's overhead. And then when the sun is going down, that color might also change too because it's a little bit darker. So before I commit to a white, I wanna see how it reads on the walls at three different times of day. Another thing that's great about doing this with color painted onto a small canvas is you can move it around the house. So if you're gonna have multiple rooms all painted the same shade of white, it saves you a lot, a lot of labor from having to paint swatches on like 20 different walls in a house. I also have another way to help control color cast in a room, and that has to do with what you cover your windows with. So let's say you're gonna go with drapery, or a Roman shade, or a roller shade. If you stick with a pure white, especially something that's light filtering that has just a pure white backing, it will help block out any of those colors outside the window and make sure they don't get in the room. Instead, all that comes in is a perfectly filtered, beautiful white. Another way that I really help to avoid color cast in an all white space is to go all white. And when I say all white, I mean seriously, all white. The walls, the trim, the ceiling, the floor, any type of ceramic or stone that you have in the room. What it does is it works almost like a powerhouse stopping any color influence that could come in from the window and it just kind of counterbalances it. So you end up with pure white everywhere. The more that I talk about all the attention to detail that goes into pulling off a pure all white room, it makes me realize, yeah, it could be kind of intimidating, but I promise you that payoff is totally worth it. So let's get into that next. You may notice that a lot of interior designers and architects immediately like default to pure ultra white. 
And there's a reason for that. When you have a home or a space that has really architecturally interesting highlights, like interesting windows, interesting trim work, a cool ceiling, or like a really cool door or hallway or an archway, if you paint everything around that thing that you want your eye to go to pure white, whatever's not white is going to stand out. Case in point, this is my great room. It's made up of three different areas. There's a lounge, there's kind of like a studio dining area, and then there's a TV room. Each of those are separated from one another by divider screens that are made out of ash and they've been stained dark walnut. I want you to walk into this area and I want your eyes directly to go to those screens. And because the walls, the trim, some of the upholstery and the floors and the ceilings are all painted white, you walk in and the first thing you notice are the divider screens. So let's take it back to your house. Let's say that you've got a really interesting fireplace or brickwork, or you've got really interesting base molding all around a room, or like a window that's just really, really special. If everything surrounding those really unique features that you want people to notice immediately is painted white, that is directly where the eye is gonna go. Another reason to choose white for your home's interior design is all about how it plays with light. If you happen to be in a space that doesn't necessarily have a lot of wall space or a lot of square footage, but you have a lot of windows and natural light, using pure white will help bounce all that light around and make everything feel so much more open and airy. And that's what I've done in my house. I have huge windows everywhere. And even if it's not super bright out, there's still enough light coming in the windows where it always feels light and bright inside. Another reason people love designing with white is because how it can help bold colors pop off walls even more. If you come over this way and look at this end of this room, I have this collection of art that I love. And these are felt creations of different people from pop culture, and they're made with really bold colors. There's greens and reds and blues and turquoises and oranges. And because the walls are stark white, those bold colors appear even more vibrant and they just jump out at you. This is something that art galleries and museums do all the time because when you walk into a space and everything is pure stark white, your eye goes to that featured artwork that you really want people to pay attention to. And also, there's no timestamp on it. White is not dedicated to one particular style of architecture or one style of decor or design. It works with all different types of taste. If you want a color that's never gonna go out of style, white's where it's at. So even if you're in like a cramped and closed off space, if you use white, everywhere possible, you could create the illusion of just a little bit more square footage, and it also just results in a beautiful open and airy vibe. So I've gone over all the reasons I love and recommend working with white, but also I do have some rules to follow, so let's get into those. The biggest question that I get asked by people who are intimidated by working with white is, how do I do it without it looking super sterile? And the answer is, well, visual tension. It's one of my favorite terms in interior design. And what I mean by visual tension is the result in putting all different types of textures into a room that play off one another. It's really about opposites. So if you have like all flat and shiny surfaces, things will kind of feel sterile or flat. And if you have like something that's really coarse with something that's really refined, or if you have something really shiny with something very dull, or something formal with something very casual, you've got this really beautiful juxtaposition. And if you keep mixing all these different types of materials together that have different textural values, nothing will be sterile. It'll be layered and beautiful, organic, and effortless. This is something anybody can do in their own home. If you just think of all the different elements you need to complete a space, furniture, floor coverings, wall coverings, art, lighting, accessories, just keep them all with different materials and different shades of white, and it won't look sterile. My next rule when you're designing with white is to keep cool whites and warm whites separate. And what I mean by that is some whites have warm undertones that fall like into the beige or the cream family, whereas others with cool undertones have blues or grays in them. Make sure that your design elements fall into one of those families, don't mix them. So. If you have a lot of things in a room that are cool whites, stick with cool whites. Don't introduce warm because then it just throws off the balance. And finally, make sure you pay attention to your lighting source when you're designing a space using white. And what I mean by that is the value of the warmth or the coolness of your light bulbs. This can actually be a very controversial topic in the interior design world. In fact, I would say 90% of my interior designer friends love a warm white light bulb, not me. I feel like if you stick with a pure, LED daylight bulb that has more like cool blue undertones, it will allow any colors you introduce into a space to read true to their values. And uh, that's my rule. It's not written in stone, but I, I prefer a cool daylight LED bulb to make everything read just like pure white. 
All right, so that's more or less like A to Z everything about working with my favorite color for interiors, white. I hope you've learned some really useful information from this chapter and I'll see you next time.